Hello to all of you viewers of The Pioneer. We continue to bring you all the hot developments regarding the Russia-Ukraine war. The war continues at full intensity. News from the conflict zones show that there is an intense struggle on the front line. The increasing tension between the Ukrainian army and the Russian army is forcing the parties to stand by. The Ukrainian army is fighting with all its might to clear the occupying Russian army from its territory. The focus of international policies is also on the ongoing war in Ukraine. All this continues to push Moscow into a corner. Maintaining its aggressive policy approach, the Kremlin administration continues to lose more and more casualties every day. The Kremlin administration continues to suffer more and more casualties every day in the ongoing war. The growing unrest in the Russian army is causing different voices to emerge in Moscow, but all this is not enough for the Russian army to withdraw. Instead of admitting his mistake, the Russian leader, Putin, blames senior commanders and ministers for the war and absolves himself from responsibility for the war. The Russian army continues to lose blood every day. The Ukrainian army continues to implement its plan without being affected by the circumstances. Kyiv officials emphasize that work continues with strong steps in line with the determined plan. The attacks of the Ukrainian army continue within the scope of strategic operations. In the attack launched last night, targets belonging to the Russian army were hit by unmanned aerial vehicles. Many ammunition belonging to the Russian army were destroyed. In addition, a fighter jet of the Russian army was shot down by the Ukrainian army. Now, if you're ready, let's analyze the latest developments together. As the Pioneer team, we strive to convey to you the developments regarding the Russia-Ukraine war. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss our daily reports and explanations. I also read all the comments you leave on our videos. Please continue to share your ideas about our content. Tell us in the comments what content you would like to see on the Pioneer channel. And now, let's start if you're ready. The Pioneer reports. Last night, the Russian army was shaken by the Ukrainian offensive. The attack, launched by the Hortetsia group of forces operating in the eastern Donetsk region of the country, gave the Russian army a great fright. Ukrainian forces shot down a Russian Su-25 ground attack aircraft in the attack. The aircraft was shot down by anti-aircraft guns from the 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade while attacking Ukrainian frontline positions near the town of Pokrovsk, according to a statement posted by Ukrainian forces on social media. The Soviet-designed Sukhoi armored aircraft has been widely used by both sides since the start of the full-scale occupation in February 2022. The single-seat aircraft is designed to provide close air support to ground forces and is armed with bombs, rockets and missiles. Close-range ground support roles often make Su-25 crews target for anti-aircraft defenses, including shoulder-fired weapons carried by infantry. Thanks to the accuracy, skill and professionalism of our anti-aircraft fighters, today Russian aviation has destroyed one more combat aircraft. Su-25 attack aircraft, the Hortizia group said in a statement on social media. The Ukrainian military also made a statement about the attack. In the statement made on social media, it was stated that another Russian Su-25 jet was shot down by Ukrainian fighters in the Donetsk region. After the statement, which reached Thousands of people in a short matter of time, many people shared their comments. The attacks in which the Ukrainian army destroyed Russian warplanes and tanks are met with great joy in Kyiv. This is while the resources of the Russian army are depleting day by day. While the resources of the Russian army are depleting day by day, the Ukrainian army continues to strengthen. Ukraine claims to have shot down 362 Russian aircraft since Moscow began its full-scale occupation of the country on February 24, 2022. Pokrovsk, about 30 miles northwest of the occupied city of Donetsk, an important center for the Russian army and its specialist allies since its capture in 2014, has become one of the hottest areas on the Eastern Front in recent months.
The situation around the town and in the wider Taretsk sector is extremely critical, Ukraine's chief of general staff said in a statement. The chief of staff went on to say that fighting was continuing in three locations near Pivnichne and New York, and that 12 Russian attacks had already been thwarted. Spokesman for the Hortizia Group, Nazar Voloshin, told reporters that Russia is preparing to strengthen its units in the Taretsk sector as Moscow continues to struggle against Ukrainian defenses in the region. Voloshin said the latest Russian offensive involves infantry units ranging from small squads to units supported by bombers. On the outskirts of Taretsk, the fight against the enemy continues. The occupying forces are trying to capture the city despite significant losses of personnel and equipment. Ukrainian defenses are in good shape, officials said, noting that they have achieved great successes against Russian forces in the region. It is emphasized that the Russian forces, which are getting weaker day by day, are having difficulty withstanding Ukrainian pressure. Counterattacks by the Ukrainian army continue in different parts of the front line. Russian targets were successfully destroyed in the operation organized the other day. The images released the other day showed Ukrainian troops firing at Russian targets with a chain gun. It was determined that the footage was recorded during the attack against Russian troops in the Donetsk region. The footage shows the M2 Bradley firing rapidly at Russian troops during the ongoing invasion of Ukraine. The M2 variant accommodates a crew of three with six fully equipped soldiers. In terms of technical details, it is not actually a tank, but it is known as a tank killer due to its anti-tank missile capabilities. Named after a former U.S. soldier, the Bradley is designed to carry infantry or scouts with armored protection while intercepting fire in war zones. Variants of the Bradley include the M2 Infantry Fighting Vehicle and the M3 Reconnaissance Vehicle. Reconnaissance vehicles are designed to find an enemy, survey the environment and observe areas to gain strategic advantages on the battlefield. The vehicle protects troops from smaller enemy fire and offers sufficient firepower to eliminate incoming enemy infantry. The vehicles used by the Ukrainian army are quite beneficial for activities in the region. The support provided to the Ukrainian army by Western countries has been critical for Kyiv throughout the war. The Ukrainian army needs to protect its resources and manage the war process by increasing them. Ukraine's needs must must also be met sensitively in order to continue its fight against the Russian occupation. The Ukrainian leader Zelensky is successfully managing the war process. He frequently meets politicians to ensure that Kyiv's needs are met. What do you think about the downing of the Russian jet by the Ukrainian military? Do you think the losses of the Russian military raise Moscow's concerns? What do you think about the Ukrainian army's strategic counter-strike operations? What are your views on the M2 Bradley vehicles? We care about your opinions, so please share them with us.